we are going to be talking about being stuck. I've spent a lot of my Christian life stuck, frustrated with myself, frustrated with my lack of progress, feeling like I'm going in circles. And we're going to be talking tonight about how this connects back to lies that we believe. And it's really actually about lies that the enemy has convinced us that that these lies are actually what's true. And a lot of us aren't even aware of it. I wasn't aware of it. And a lot of these lies, as I've gotten into it, are actually lies about God. They're accusations that Satan has about God. And this is what he's been doing since the garden, Genesis 3. Satan is basically telling Eve that God is holding out on you. And so what we're going to talk about today, I'm here with my friend Joel, and I'll talk about him in a minute, but Joel and I are going to share real lies that we've been believing or that we've believed in the past or even the fighting to believe, to not believe now. And we're going to talk about the truths that God has given us that replace those lies. And we're going to help you grasp a tool that can help you identify the lies in your life because if you're believing a lie you might not even realize it and help you replace them with truth so this is my buddy joel here joel mcgill those of you who are familiar with the channel have seen this guy before he is uh, a good friend and actually mentor of mine i can call you my mentor right who's the mentor of me that's what i gotta figure out. no i'm just kidding yes <laughs> jesus is mentoring us both Yes, that's right. He's we're mentoring you through my weakness and me through your strength. Uh, or or we're both just on the journey. Let's go with that. <laughs> and uh, Joel and I, uh, Joel is actually on YouTube as well. And uh, he's been on YouTube since like last year, right? August. Bro, almost a year. It's when that nerve wracking moment I upload, did the first upload. <laughs> Terrifying. And Joel actually... Um, how long have you been doing missions, Joel? Uh, since 2000, what? January 2000. 2000. So 23 and a half years, I guess. Since I was 12 years old, <laughs> Joel's been doing missions. So Pretty he clearly ancient knows days. a little bit more about missions than me, uh, a little bit more about everything than me, which Just is why I'm having him mentor me. Depends and, uh, on the topic, I'm sure. <laughs> and one of the main focuses of Joel's channel is hearing God speak and it's been really incredible for me to get to hear some of his teaching. Uh, your updated hearing God's course just came out and there's some stuff in there that's been like blowing my mind and hearing God is kind of my thing, but I feel like as I'm listening to you, I'm like, I got more to learn. Well, there's people I listen to that are the same that are, we're all, like I said, we're all on a journey. Some are further along in certain categories and further behind in others. So it's all, it's all a journey. Yeah. So, Joel, before we jump into the lies that we've been believing, I, I kind of want to hear your take on, like, why we're even talking about this. Like, don't we know the Bible? Like, I grew up in, as a Christian. I heard these sermons over and over and over again. Um, like, I know God's good. How, why, how is it possible that Christians who know the Bible, who know, you know, that God is omnipotent and all loving and all powerful, like, how is it that, that Christians can get caught up in believing lies about who God is? Well, I think it, it all comes down to what does it mean to truly know something? I think we often say, well, I know, or I, I've heard that, or you know, you might even have it memorized or something like that, but it's a different uh, world when it's part of your worldview, when it literally is the driving force of your decisions, of how you see the world, how you perceive uh, people, yourself, reality, and I think, you know, you can read something and say, oh yeah, I, I know that, but um, man, there's just been so many times where God is exposed in my own life where I, I, I could have preached, I had messages, I had notes on subjects, and like, God would reveal to me that I do not believe it. Like, I really don't because I don't live it. And especially when I'm squeezed, right? Does it come out, right? Does Is that the thing that emerges? And uh, many times it's not. And it's because I, I like it. I, I might like being associated with it. But I at my core, I, I don't truly believe. And so, again, I think there's times where 
Uh, we might know things that we have because we've heard them kind of at a surface level, head level, but at a heart level, um, we, we sometimes don't even know what we believe, what we don't believe until, uh, again, we're under pressure and we're squeezed. That's usually when it comes out. Yeah, and I feel like it's kind of easy to fake it. Like we all know what we're supposed to look like, what we're supposed to sound like, what we're supposed to say about God in our Bible studies or in our, you know, discipleship groups. Like I can talk all day long about the fact that God is a father, but that doesn't mean that I really understand or believe or operate like he's a father or like he's a good father. And I, I've struggled with this actually for a long time, trying to like seeing this discrepancy between what I claim to believe or what I like mm -hmm. know is right. Maybe even like, I know that for example, God loves me, but there's there's like a disconnect in my heart um, mm -hmm. around that. And I think that's kind of what we're talking about here tonight is when you can't – either you don't know that distance or when you can't overcome that distance, you sort of have to figure out how do I make do with what I've got? Like how do I continue to operate in my role as a pastor or a missionary or as a father or, you know, pew – sitting in the pew, whatever. It doesn't matter you still kind of need to present yourself as this Christian who knows and does what they're supposed to do. And that's not always the maybe. case. Maybe. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible scenario, but yeah. Maybe. Or abandon it all and, and, <laughs> and be authentic self. Yeah, I don't know. It's somewhere into in between. Is Authenticity is, is should be Christianity 101, but uh, so should humility and... Um, you know, not making, not saying, well, this is just who I am, but, uh, but seeing, you know, when, when you're not what you know you should be, right? You know the right, but you do the wrong. Uh, Paul talks about it's not you doing, it's a sin operating in you. And so it's like, okay, well, how, who's going to help us, right? And thankfully there is help um, and that Jesus can deal with that. But man, what a horrible life to be struggling uh, on the inside and, and be having to fake, uh, you know, to everybody. And I think we got to get rid of that version of Christianity uh, stat. Um, I've even faked it to myself for a long time, like not aware. And I think that's what we're going to get into here. Sometimes God reveals to us things that we're believing that like we're clueless to. Mm -hmm. And that's where if you're listening, you know, this is not necessarily something that you're sitting here saying, oh yeah, I know I'm believing a lie or I know that I'm, you know, messed up in my thinking on this, you might actually think you're good to go and you might actually yeah. have figured out how to sort out the, the consequences of it in your life. And you go talk to the Lord and the Lord's like, no, you're believing this lie. And you're like, Oh yeah. shoot. So <laughs> if you're in that place of being stuck and frustrated, some of that is even when you're following Jesus, dying to yourself, the difficulty of, of laying down your life, frustration is a real part of that in a lot of ways. But if you're, for me, it's like stuck in the same place, the same sin, the same mm -hmm. issue, trying to obey the Lord and feeling like I'm failing miserably, um, or or at least, yeah, that to me is a pretty good sign that you got something there that needs to be worked out. Yeah. So let's jump into it. Um, we're going to talk through some lies, and the first one that I'm going to talk about is actually going to help us lay the groundwork of what we're talking about here, and it actually comes out of Genesis three. Um, many of you are familiar with this story of. This, the serpent, Satan, who comes and tempts Eve. And she essentially, uh, well, Satan essentially says to Eve, did God say not to eat from any tree in the garden? And then Eve says, you know, no, just this one tree, we can't eat from it or we'll die. And then Satan says, you won't die. And God knows that when you eat of it, that you'll become like him, knowing good and evil. And so the, the accusation that's really going on here is against God and Satan is essentially saying God's trying to hold good things back from you. Like if you were to really understand good and evil, you would be like God. And now you would be uh, God wants to keep that from you. God doesn't want you to have what's really good. And this is, I think the baseline of these lies that are in our head is a lot of them are actually put there by the enemy. The enemy is actually, speaking through the people in our lives, speaking even to us, these lies. And the temptation is to say, I'm going to believe the enemy and disbelieve God. God says, don't do this thing. I think God's wrong. I think that that's a good thing. And that the, if you dial all the way back, it's actually an accusation against God. God, you're, 
you're holding out on me. You're, you're trying to keep something good from me. And so in, in a lot of ways, all these lies could come back to that lie of God's not good or God's holding out on me. For sure. And I've been struggling with this in my own life. I mean, this is the reality of my addiction to my phone, right? I mean, God's saying, come be with me. I have life for you. And I'm like, this thing right here is going to make me feel good. And God's like, no, come be with me in relationship. Um, like at least come to me first. Let's, you know, let me be who you come to. And then, yeah, maybe you can go look at your phone afterwards. We can look at it together, hmm. but come to me first. And I'm like, I don't know if you can truly satisfy me, God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can truly meet the need in my heart. Mm -hmm. That lie, again, I could say all day long, God's good and he's my everything and, you know, sing the songs. But that lie is actually the way that I've been living. And that's a struggle, like to actually put my phone down and focus on Jesus. I'm struggling with that today. So put it down, Phil, put it down right now. <laughs> so that's the first lie that I've been believing. And I've been fighting like, God, you are enough. You satisfy. Yeah. And like, you aren't holding out on me. You actually have yeah. the best for me and like delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that's the first lie. Joel, I'm going to send it to you. What, what's a lie that you have believed or are still struggling to mm. not believe about God. Yeah, I think for me, uh, the lie that I've struggled with uh, is that people are more powerful than God and that the bad decisions that they make and the things they do to me, around me, whatever, can somehow thwart God's plan for my life. Like that one is like just, uh, you know, it just plagued me for a while. The Lord uh, convicted me one time I was just asking him to come and search my heart and and where am I carrying things that I shouldn't be carrying and worries or whatever. And he said, you, you, I, you have an idolatry of people. And I was like, how could that be possible? I don't even like people. Like, how could I be idolizing these people? Because <laughs> I can't stand most of them. And I don't, you know. I'm from Chicago, so I'm pretty blunt with it. I just, I didn't, I don't like people. Uh, and so I was like, how could I idolize them? And he said, you believe that they're more powerful than me. And you think that their sin is more powerful than my grace. Um, and that I can't work all things for good uh, for you. And so, uh, yeah, so just like bl it, really wrestling with blaming people and feeling like these, you know, these people are going to somehow keep me, um, from his purpose or that, that somehow their bad decisions uh, will thwart uh, his plan for my life, which is just ludicrous to even say. But in the, in the moment, that's been a lie that has definitely been there for me. Well, and it's, I think it's challenging when, you know, circumstances play around somebody, you know, that you need permission from to get access to a group of people or do a thing or show up at an event when they are not doing what you feel like they should do, you gotta <laughs> you gotta deal with that and you gotta trust God in that process. So yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. So next lie, the the second lie that I'm believing, um, we're hoping to get to five here, is that God is mostly frustrated with me um, because of my sin and my lack of willingness or ability to be faithful. And this is kind of when I look at my my life, I'm like, oh man, I got 50 areas that I should be doing better in. I should be a better husband. I should be a better father. I should be more consistent in my praying for other people, serving other people. I you know, like just, I've got this long list and it's, it's a lie because it's just not actually what God's saying to me. It's, it's actually the enemy who's coming into my head and saying, yeah, you're not perfect in this way. You're not perfect in that way. Actually, a lot of it actually, as simple as it sounds, it comes from me judging other people. I think the starting point is the enemy comes in and says, look at you know this person in your life. They could do this better. Look at that person in their life. They could do that better. And then those judgments come back on me. And now I'm trying to come up to this standard of this, you know, all these criticisms. And it's a lie because I... I think I attribute it to God, but like when I actually ask God how I'm doing, like he usually is saying, I'm pleased with you and I love you. And he convicts me of sin. He might tell me like, Hey, this isn't good. Let's, mm -hmm. let's not do that. So it's not like God's a pushover or doesn't care about sin. 
Um, but he's he's really in the end not mostly frustrated with me. He's actually mostly pleased with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to throw a thought on that in the first one as well. In this, as sin is one of my favorite definitions is just thinking you're smarter than God. Right? Like that's that's a great definition of sin, whether it's Eve in the garden uh, or whether it's situations like this, whether, you know, we start thinking we have a better assessment of reality of how even of how we're doing. Right. Like that you that, you know, yourself better than he does. Um, and uh, that, you know, is just it's it's sin. You know, right. It's 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 arrogant to think that his assessment of you is uh, is not accurate. You know, and so I think that's such an important thing to remember uh, along the way when we are like down on ourselves. But then as we dialogue with him, he's actually like, you know what, this isn't the end of the world and you're going to be OK. And, step, you know, step into, uh, you know, into the, the, the ring again and keep fighting. And, uh, you know, it's 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 hard when our emotions have lied to us and, our, you know, we bought in this life for a while. It's hard for us to just snap out of that. Um, but I have a, a phrase that I say a lot, which is don't let your emotions catch up to, or don't wait for your emotions to catch up to your obedience. And uh, that's a really important lesson because sometimes our emotions are just bold faced liars. Yeah. And I, you were saying uh, in a conversation we had recently, you know, God brought Jesus down here, died on the cross to deal with our sin. The sin really does matter, but it's been dealt with so that he can have a relationship with us and he's not frustrated about every little sin. He's hurt by it. It affects him, but he, he died so that we could in that place of struggle with sin, still be connected with him. And it's when I believe this lie, the effect that it has on my life is that I, I pull away from God Mm -hmm. because I don't want to go to God when he's disappointed, frustrated, you know, annoyed at me. And I'm sitting here thinking like, well, I would be annoyed with me. I am annoyed with me. And Satan's like, yeah, you should be annoyed with you. God's annoyed with you. And it's just a lie. <laughs> yeah, he's so so much uh, slower to anger, right? And he's uh, so patient and all these different things. And we, we project what we are, which is not those things, on him. Uh, but yeah, he is um, not afraid of our mistakes. He's uh, more concerned that we won't uh, draw back to him and repent and receive forgiveness and move on. So good. All right. What's your, what's another lie that you've struggled to? It's like, which one? Not believe. Um, <laughs> got a whole long list of them. Got a whole long list. More um, than five. I think one, uh, one was in my leadership. Um, I think I believed uh, just even through my own, maybe hurts and wounds from leaders um, who uh, were, I think, at times intimidated uh, and even came and told me so. Uh, But like that, if I really expressed, um, you know, and lead my leadership gift and leading out that it would hurt people and that I had to be, um, you know, just avoid conflict and that that was bad, you know, conflict was bad. And that if I if I lead out too strong, I'm going to harm people. Um, And just that whole idea that my, um, you know, the gift that God's given me is 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 bad uh, in that way. And uh, Mm -hmm. um, the Lord really convicted me of that and showed that I actually had lied to people by making them uh, uh, think I was a weak leader. <laughs> I had actually, he, and he made me actually go repent to them uh, and said, I'm sorry that I uh, acted like a pushover or that I w- you know, was afraid of conflict because it's actually not who I really am. And, um, and uh, you know, I had, to, I had misled people because I was afraid of uh, hurting people by being a strong leader, which the Lord's really showed me that a lot of um you know, hurt that comes from leaders is actually from weak leaders uh, and, and leaders that are insecure. And uh, anyway, that's been a big one of just attack on my leadership. Wow. And what would you say, like in a succinct way, or maybe even we haven't pulled the scripture in on, on these, we should. What would you say is like a truth that you've declared or like what would you say is the truth that replaces that lie? Uh, here I can pull up my truth list. <laughs> Uh, which I highly recommend. Um, 
Um, he said, I'll read it to you, the whole one. He said, you are a leader. Get that in your head. No one can take that away from you. You are okay with me. You will never be okay with everyone or anyone at times. I am your savior and truth. Trust in that, not in what others think or do. Do not be afraid of anyone. I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. And then he said, repent to those that you have misled. Dang. Yeah, and, and what Joel's reading off of there is a truth list. And that's kind of all of these lies and truths we're talking about. We're not like really good journalers. Like this isn't really introspective where it's like I just thought really hard about myself and I, I analyzed life situations. A lot of these lies are, I think, past all that. Like they're kind of stuck further deeper than that. Maybe after 20 years of counseling or something like that, maybe they come out. But um, maybe not. Maybe you get more more lies. But no, these are coming out of a tool that um, that Joel has put together on YouTube called Freedom for the Willing. And this tool essentially helps let the Holy Spirit guide you through. Like you start off actually asking the Holy Spirit, what lie am I believing? What Or what issue in my life are you wanting to address? And so it could be that God wants to address an addiction. It could be that he wants to address, yeah, like the, that you're operating as a weak leader or that you're you know, bad with money or whatever it is, he brings up that issue. And then this process is just questions that we ask the Holy spirit. Where did I believe this? Where did I learn this lie? Who taught it to me? And, you know, we, there's a process of forgiveness. There's a process of repentance. And eventually it brings you to God. What's the truth that you want to replace this lie with? And that's what Joel just read is the truth from that thing. So Um, you can't take, I mean, you could, (laughs) you might be like, Oh, that's the truth I needed. But like for a lot, in a lot of cases, you actually need the Holy spirit to show you the specific lies and truths that you need to address your heart. And this isn't sort of like, that's pretty close or that might be it. Like you can actually have the Holy spirit show you what it is for you. Amen. So, um, was that number four? I thought it was two. That was your second one. You did two and I did two. So number four together. We'll just keep going we can go, until we, we can run go out all, No, no, we'll go all, we can go all night if we went by content, I'm sure. Like I got a whole list of struggles and, and uh, things that I got caught up in. Well, I'll throw another one out there. So a lie that I've been believing is that God only cares about people in so much as he can get value out of them, as he can get them to do things for him as, as they're effective. And I wouldn't even necessarily think of it that way. It is what I'm thinking about God, but really it's me thinking in order for me to get God's attention or for God to care about me or love me, I need to prove to him that I'm a, like a good asset that I can do stuff for him that I can get, like I can get stuff done for, for Jesus. And he's like, man, Phil, I like that guy. Um, and of course I've like, I've really fall short of that standard that I place on myself because I can't, I'm, I'm, I mean, we, none of us, you know, even Jesus said I can do nothing on my own and all of my attempts to do stuff. Um, sometimes they impress other people, but I, I don't get the sense that God's like, Oh my gosh, what an amazing person. I'm, yes. He does say that about me, but <laughs> yeah. So the, the lie there is that, that God values me because of what I can do for him. And when I asked him what the truth was, he actually said that he values people. Like he actually loves people and that people is is the fruit for him. Like the, the fruitfulness that I could have in my life is that I might help draw more people to him because in the end he wants more people. So his interest in me is not in what I can do for him. His interest in me is in me. Like he's just interested in me and man, what a, what a release to be like, Oh, cool. I can just, you're interested in me. Well, I'll, I'm available. Let's, let's hang out. Well, it's, it's interesting that G, the VIPs in Jesus' life were children. So, like, the people that he, like, prioritized, that he interrupted meetings for, that he talked about on a regular basis, being that we need to become like them, are the people who are, like, the least productive in many respects, right? Like, they're just playing. They're just having fun. You know, at least they should be uh, as kids. And so, you know, what a, what a really clear image of... Um, that truth that you got is that, you know, that he loves people because we're made in his image, right? He made us that he might love us. Um, and he's the God of the universe. Like, what does he really need, uh, from us? Right. And, um, yeah, it's such a 
such a great truth and reality. I have five kids and a dog and a cat. The Lord told me to get a dog and the Lord told me to get a cat. And he keeps telling me to have kids. And I've been frustrated for a long time with all these people around me that like need me to love them. And I'm looking at them like, man, none of these people are, are like doing anything for me. Like, especially the cat, <laughs> the cat is not doing anything for you. It's, it's, no, it's but you're, you're actually right. Like this dog, I come home and the dog's like, come here, like pet me, love on me. And I'm like, you're just kind of dirty and reminding me that I'm not good at taking care of a dog. And I haven't taught you any tricks and you just eating food in my house. And, and it, it's funny when I, when I realized this truth, I was like, Oh, I'm supposed to enjoy all these people and like right. enjoy this dog, and this cat. Right. And the Lord's like, I'm going to give you the, all of this stuff until you like, cause I'm, I'm genuinely going all after Jesus. This is my YouTube channel all in for Jesus. But many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find there's this, this gap between what I say, what I claim, God, I'm all in for you. I love you. I, I do anything for you. And he's like, great. Love this dog. You know, love your kids. And I'm like, they're useless. They do nothing for me, God. Can you give me something more important and fun to do? Like, and he's like, I just love people. I love you. I love this ki- these kids. I even love this dog. You should love this dog too. It'll, it'll help you out a lot. Like, <laughs> uh, there, there's, yeah. there's a little bit of uh, exposure on, on how this lies played out in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm already like, this is a lot of this is fresh for me. And I'm already seeing like my attitude change towards my kids, which is mm. really sweet. Yeah, that's right. That's that's you know, with our kids are you know, one of my lies is actually related to my kids and my ability to parent. Um uh, you know, I grew up in a house of all girls, right? And uh I uh then married my wife and had two girls and so here I am in a house of all girls again, right? <laughs> it's like most of my life. And uh, and then when the Lord started speaking to us about a son, I went through this whole turmoil. I was like, what am I going to do with, with this guy? You know, I'm like, I didn't know what to do. There was so much of just like my own um, inadequacy and my own lack uh, in that area. And the Lord really uh, <laughs> brought to the attention that, uh, he was like, what like skill sets or expertise did you bring to the table in parenting your daughters? <laughs> you, you act like you had this like all figured out in one category. And because you hadn't lived with a man and you didn't have a dad around, you didn't have this like that, you know, you had some deficit. He's like, you knew nothing about any of it. <laughs> he goes, you didn't know how to do any of this. I taught you how to be a father. I taught you how to be a husband. He's like, I'm the one bringing all the expertise to the table. And he's like, you are no more qualified to parent a a, 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 a girl or a, a, a boy. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, he just began to speak over me that I would, you know, he, he, my father had one, he goes, you are a great father. Um, and he said, I've crafted you in your role as a father. Um, and you'll be a great father role model for any son. He'll be proud to be your son. Uh, let him enjoy you and your presence. Um, and, uh, you know, and he basically is like, um, you, you're not your father. You are my son and I am your true dad. I love you, son. Like he was just pouring out this thing on like, what does it mean to be a, a father to a son? That like that he, that he, you know, it's not, I don't have to make him a man. He, God made him a man. I don't need to do that. I just need to love him the way that the fathers love me and all the things that he has done in my life. You know, I'm just supposed to mimic those things, not these like cultural stereotypes, right? So that was a big, you know, burden lifter for me. And he said all that to me before we even had a son, right? So that was like in advance, you know, he was uh, helping me. There's my camera freezing up. Um, and, uh, and so just even that whole idea of, you know, like these kids are just, you know, in the same way that God just pours out his love to us, not based on what we can do for him, but just on the fact that we're in his image. Well, here's a perfect example to be Christ-like in that they're made in your image right? <laughs> in many respects. They look, I know your kids, they do look like you and uh, they look <laughs> like your wife, right? Like, so there you are. And, he, and, and God is like wanting to pour his love through you 
into them and that that's your primary job as a as a parent is to really allow god to pour out his love and and what and his loving discipline uh into their life so yeah and i think you know this is to connect this back to you guys because really our goal here in sharing these lies is to help you realize oh this is a different way of thinking about this like i study my bible every day i pray to god but like look at your life. This is what I've been doing and see like, where is the brokenness like leaking out? Where is it boiling over? Where are you finding yourself angry when that doesn't make sense to be angry or finding yourself addicted to something, numbing this pain in your heart? These places are like places where God wants to come and meet us and be what we need. And like the love, there's nothing like, having kids that will bring out the pain in your heart because you're like, Oh my gosh, I, I can't be perfect at this. And all of my issues are coming out and then you're, you're picking up on them and then you're playing them back to me. Like in my home, there's a lot of criticism and it's cause I, I'm a critical person and I've been critical in my home. And if I come in and let God replace the lie that's underneath of that with truth, you know, that it's not about output. It's not about how productive you are. It's about you. I love you. Then I can see a shift in my home where I actually, I'm unable to love my kids if I'm under that lie because my kids aren't that useful because they keep doing things wrong. But when I get free from that lie, so we can keep going with lies. I don't know uh, if it would be the most helpful though. I want to shift over to Joel, like, how have you been freed from these lies? You're reading this list to us. Like, is it just like you got this list? You read it once. You're like, cool. This is now what I believe. I can go do something else. Like, has it been a struggle? Has it been a battle? How do you actually get these lies out and get the truth in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this whole process that you mentioned, Freedom for the Willing, has been a journey of just walking with a lot of uh, people try that are struggling. You know, they're in the wrestle, trying to get free, trying to overcome sin, getting caught up in things, and just struggling over and over and over again. Um, and as I was uh, just praying with them and processing with them, uh, the Lord began to give me these questions just over and over again. And what we would do is, um, He would give me. You know, we'd be trying to figure out you know, where the, what the cause of it is. And we would just, and the Lord would, would prompt me to say, Hey, ask me what the lie is they're believing that's causing this issue. And so I'm like, I think we're supposed to ask the Lord what the lie is and uh, he's going to speak it to you. And so we would ask the Lord and the Holy Spirit would speak directly to them, you know, where, what the lie was. And, and they would say, Oh man, I didn't even know I believed that. But it's true, and I see how I've, I've walked out that. And so the Holy Spirit just over time kept giving me these same questions, and so I wrote them down and, and put it together in a way where uh, it can be gone through. But where it really leads you is towards the truth. And, um, you know, the Bible says you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And this idea of knowing truth like we started out talking is like this is deeper than just, you know, you can memorize the scripture. Is like, is it in you? Do you know it? Like, have you encountered it? Um, and so, you know, no, it's not just like, okay, I just read the list and I'm done. It's, you know, I got to wake up every day and, uh, you know, I do what we call our truth, these declarations, right? We de- I declare these truth lists. Um, and what I found is as I do these daily declarations in the, of these truths, I find that I lose the motivation to even want to do the bad stuff. And, and in the same way where these lies that were coming in constantly being reinforced, um, were producing this activity in my life. And it was, and so by working the other end of the spectrum and saying, okay, I'm going to contend for truth by meditating on it, by declaring it, and by demonstrating it every day, going, okay, if this is true, if this is who I really am, how should I live today? How should I talk today? How should I act today? And so that's where the battle really comes in. And so what I've done with just follow-up with people is as they've done these daily declarations on a consistent basis, 
I follow up and I'm like, how's it going? They're like, man, I'm, I don't struggle with that anymore. I've been free. And then I followed up with other people who don't do the daily declarations. They're not contending for truth. And they're like, oh yeah, that didn't really work. I'm still struggling with it. And I'm like, oh, do you, you know, do you do your daily declarations? And they're like, oh no, I don't have that. You know, do you have those? I'm like, no man, the Holy Spirit gave them to you. So, you know, f- knowing truth is a primary vehicle to walking in freedom, right? Because we'll know the truth, truth to make you free. So yeah, that's really the it's simplicity of it, but just God gave some simple questions uh, that can, you know, I've walked like 250 people through it at the same time while the Holy Spirit wow. spoke to each one of them because I don't have to do anything. He's the counselor. He's the one that actually walks them through it. I'm literally just framing a conversation, allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he loves to do, which is set people free. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I think that really hit home for me. I realized recently that I've gone through a lot of freedom, but I basically came away with like this souvenir, like, oh, look, I I now intellectually know this thing. And I uh, I went back and looked at my journal at the beginning of this year. The Lord told me, go back and look at your journal. And I realized the Lord had been speaking the same thing to me like multiple times a week, mo- like every week for like months and months and months. And he was still speaking it to me today. And it's this realization that that we do need to have our eyes open to the truth. We do need that moment of realization of like, oh, this is the truth and this is the lie. But we actually have to like – reject the wrong thinking and accept the the right thinking. This is the whole take every thought captive that uh, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we wage war against it and we, we make it obedient to Christ. This is what we're doing. We're allowing the Holy Spirit to show us this is where the enemy has strength in your life because you're believing these lies. You actually have to like force your thinking to change. It's not, it, knowledge is key it's a starting point, but you've got to actually turn that knowledge into thinking. And I was kind of waiting for it to be like, oh, I feel this. Like, I feel like God loves me or I feel like I'm important to God, even though I haven't done anything. But I've spent years forcing this thought into my head, this lie into my head. I've got to take some time to, to force the truth in. That's right. Yeah, and that's what often people don't think about. They've spent years and years and years reinforcing this lie, and it's, again, your emotions are tied to it. There's so many things, and so I talk about it. It's like, let's give the the truth some time, you know, and give it, uh, you know, uh, it, at least the same amount, uh, you know, of just continually reinforcing that. And um, these are the weapons, right, of, of warfare that we have, Um and, you know, we take every thought captive that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And so that's like an active every time, you know, we should be b- building a filter where that lie comes in that says you're a critical person. It's like, no, I'm not a critical person. In Christ Jesus, I'm actually slow to anger. I'm abounding in loving kindness. Like, that's actually who you are in Christ Jesus. So catching that and going, okay, no, that's not true. That's who I've been. That's who I am in the flesh. But I'm going to choose to resist resist the flesh, I'm going to crucify the flesh, and I'm going to choose to walk in a different path. And again, initially, that feels difficult. It's hard. It's a battle. But as we battle in with the truth and we're declaring that truth, that's where the spiritual warfare, you know, really begins to kick in um, because the enemy is going to be saying, well, no, 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 that's not true. And you're like, no, no, it is true. And you have to stand your ground. And as you stand on truth, he'll re- you can resist the enemy and he'll flee. He does not persevere. He That's a godly characteristic. And he doesn't have any of those. So if we we stand, if we persevere, and, st- and and stand our ground, he will flee. He will not uh, prevail. Um, but many times we, you, we're just want it like that. And then it's like, okay, you know, we don't have to deal with it anymore. But it, that's just not the case that I've found. I think it's a, it's a regular decision and battle. And you do get victory and you do overcome. And I don't struggle with all the same things I struggled before. And there's a lot of areas that honestly... I haven't struggled with in in decades, um, but and that's the way it should be, right? We should be getting victory, but there's always the next hill, right? There's always, and that'll be until we are with Jesus, where we're you know we're like Him fully. But until then, we're just going to press on. Yeah, I think every day, I, I, this is what you're saying. But every day, you wake up and you realize, I have this flesh, I have this enemy, um, I'm battling, and 
or I'm just letting them run over me. I'm just accepting whatever my, my feelings tell me, my flesh is telling me, go grab a donut and you know, God doesn't care about you. And I'm like, especially when you're fasting. (laughs) Yeah. And, and we're used to giving our flesh, whatever it wants and letting it do whatever it wants. And it, it in turn makes us feel better or helps us Mm -hmm. numb our pain. Yeah. But we're bound up in that crap and God wants to bring freedom to us. So if you're watching this and you're like, cool, I'm tracking with you guys. I want some freedom too. This is what I would suggest. And we haven't talked a lot about the Bible in this process, but it's literally what we're talking about. When you do freedom for the willing, it's the truth list is scripture. And you need to know as you're going to hear God, what God's like from scripture. This isn't God according to you or according to me. This is God according to the Bible. And so we need to get to know the scripture Read your Bible if you don't, and go to Joel's channel. I'm going to link it in the description. Actually, I already linked it in the description of this video. Do Freedom for the Willing. He actually takes you through the prayer process. There's a PDF you can print out. Just print that sucker out. Print like 10 of them. You're going to need this. Like I've been doing like one a week, doing Freedom for the Willing every week. And it's been so good. I'm like getting like more oxygen. I feel like I'm starting to realize like, oh, shoot, I don't have to live under all this crap. Amen. So go do that and uh, go while you're there, subscribe to Joel's channel. And uh, before you leave, you can subscribe to mine if you want yeah, to. Yeah, that's right. Subscribe to Phil's. Even, though you, gotta watch, me, even though you got to watch more of Phil's videos, not just subscribe, all right? <laughs> that's true. Thanks for joining me tonight, Joel. Uh, yeah, looking so forward good. to more conversations. And uh, yeah, excited to continue to go after Jesus together. Amen. I'm in for that.